Good evening and welcome to Generation Laura TV with your host, Laura Pugh. Um, first off, I want to thank you all for uh, watching, listening, especially for the continued viewers and hopefully future viewers. Uh, I would love to have you here. This is a once a week kind of thing. Don't worry, I'm not going to blow you up with a bunch of videos. Notice I am wearing my red, white, and blue uh, a, a garb, attire, whatever you want to call it. This will be the show uh, that I have before 4th of July weekend, or before 4th of July, and uh, so I wanted to kind of show my, my true colors today, or tonight, so uh, for uh, in case I forget later on, I hope you all have a very well blessed and a healthy holiday. It is our country's birthday. I love it. <laughs> Go America. Um, on to the news, though. We There's a lot of things that I wanted to talk about uh, in this show. I could only get to one topic, though. I'm trying to, you know, out of respect for viewers, because uh, I know it's uh, even for myself, it's hard to listen to a 40-minute video. So I'm trying to keep it down to, like, 20 minutes or less. It might go a little over for certain issues. Forgive me. Um, I wanted to go into Russia and what they're doing. I wanted to go into the uh, summit in Japan. I wanted to go into a ton of stuff. But one of the things on the docket for uh, the Newsweek was, uh, I mean, everyone was talking about it. It was the Democrat 2020 primary debates that happened on um, Wednesday and Thursday. I hope no one had a drinking game going on during that time. If you did, you're probably not around to watch this right now, especially if you decided to take a shot on, um, I don't know how many times they supported illegals over American citizens or how many times they mentioned Medicare for all. Uh, another, one of the things, I mean, I, I think it was the first night, Mr. Beto O'Rourke, um, he's not even Spanish, it's Richard Francis, I believe his name is, but they call him Beto. He started speaking Spanish, and I had a glass of water in my hand, and I was taking a sip, and right when he started speaking Spanish, I kid you not, I physically spit it out of my mouth, and I was like, what the hell is going on right now? Like, what country do you think you're, like, running for president for? I honestly, that was an honest question in my head. I couldn't believe it. I had to go to the bathroom, get a towel, you know, clean up the couch and everything like that because of how much water. It was basically the entire gulp that I... It did not make it into my body. Uh, let's just say that. It was very surprising of where everything went. I mean, talk about the most un-American people to run for the president of the United States. You had it on Wednesday and Thursday. It was absolutely ridiculous. I mean, from immigration to, I'm sorry, illegal immigration. They kept calling, you know, other than the moderators, it's like undocumented you know, immigrants. No, they're illegal immigrants. Call them for what they are. They're illegal, undocumented. You're just giving them, you're putting it a nice spin, you know, making it sweeter off the tongue. I don't think so. They're illegal. <clears throat> so uh, they wanted to talk about decriminalizing that. They went into Medicare for all. They went into gun confiscation. Yeah. yeah I think it was uh, Swalwell who wanted to uh, confiscate every single military style. Define that, Swalwell, for me. Military style weapon. He said rifle, but what he means is weapon, because in my town, Deerfield, Illinois, they tried to use that, you know, um, uh, uh, assault rifle ban. They actually tried to implement it. And uh, in the ordinance, and if anyone actually read it, in which I did, it literally stated handgun in there. Handguns were also supposed to be confiscated. And uh, even at the town hall meetings, uh, there's a woman foaming at the mouth, basically, stating that she's, of course, a crazy leftist, foaming at the mouth, stating that um, she wanted not only the whole buyback thing or a turn into our sheriff's department, but also 
police banging on doors, forcing their ways in, and uh, taking our guns away from us. I don't think so. Well, thank, uh, uh, thank goodness for the Illinois Rifle Association because they went to court with uh, the village and they won. So uh, there's, a, there's a win for the uh, Second Amendment enthusiasts out there. Um, yeah, I don't think so, Village of Deerfield. Uh, anywho, so what I wanted to talk about today was the the one topic, Medicare for All. Now, I work in the health insurance industry. I know how it goes. I'm not dumb about it. I also did my research on everything. Now, let, let's just, let's, you know, climb in. Let, let's kind of cozy up to or get in bed with exactly what they're talking about um, when it comes to Medicare for All. Bernie right away, Bernie Sanders in the second debate, which is pr uh, primarily what I'm going to focus on is the second debate, because we all know that the second one, I mean, it was all randomly chosen as far as candidates going up there. I don't think so. DNC planned it. I'm sure, you know, uh, MSNBC rigged, or I'm sorry, rigged. They did that too. Uh, probably floated some questions out there that they were going to ask to specific candidates that they are kind of rooting for. It wouldn't be the first time that a mainstream media outlet would have done that. <clears throat> CNN, Donna Brazil, anyone remember that? Anywho, Bernie was asked about how he was going to pay for all of this because he wants free education, uh, debt forgiveness for college students, and uh, free Medicare for all. All. So he's going to take away, if you like your private insurance, in my company, I work in a union, by the way, my company, my company actually pays for my private insurance. I do pay union dues, not nearly to the point of how much the medical insurance is actually worth, and also not nearly to the point of how great it is. I have one of the best medical insurance uh, policies in the country. I'm proud of it, and I'm sure I'm not the only one uh, who has this benefit, or at least close to it. Bernie wants to include in Kamala Harris, and a lot of the Democrat uh, candidates want to completely wipe away private insurance companies and replace it with Medicare for all. So that means they're going to take away my insurance that I love, that I have for myself, that I have for my children, that includes dental, that includes vision. He's going to take that all away and provide government insurance. Now, what a lot of people out there... Uh, don't know about me is I'm also a veteran. Yeah, foreign war vet, actually. I have the VA. On top of it, my kids also have the VA. I know how crappy it is. This is a government-run agency. I don't have to go into it. A lot of my followers here are probably ex-military and know exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, look at the news. How many people died waiting in line for health care? It was a huge issue. You know, Trump, you know, he goes and you know sends his executive order of if you're acting in bad character, then you could be fired. You know, you're fired. Thank you. But let's see if they actually practice it. Uh, he also signs an executive order to allow uh, veterans to, if they can't get it right away at the VA facility, then they can, you know, instead of waiting on referrals, which can take up to 30 days or even longer. I mean, this is just a, a population, a small population of the entire country, and it's already waiting lists and waiting for referrals for over 30 days to be approved and what doctor you can actually go see. He wiped all of that clean. That's not going to happen in this Medicare for all. I mean, it, it's a joke. So when Bernie was asked how he, you know, how is he going to pay for this, he states, well, the middle class will pay for it. it. Means you. That means me. The middle class. You know, the people that they're rooting for. You know, oh, we're only going to go after, uh, you know, I'm Bernie Sanders and we're going to go after the top 1% because they hold all the money. They control the money. First off, how the heck do they control the money? Are they putting it under their mattresses? No, they're not. Are they are they hiding it in some like secret safe or vault or whatever in their house? No, they're not. They're reinvesting it into this economy, dummy. So I don't know what the heck you're talking about controlling that money. They're not. 
They're creating more jobs with it. They want to build their business. So yes, they themselves can make more money. But that also means creating new jobs, more jobs, all right, with higher pay because it's competitive out there. So they want the good people in their company so they can flourish even further. So what the heck are you talking about? Oh, they control all, the, all half the money in this economy. No, they don't, you loser. So he wants you, after stating that he wants to only tax the rich, uh, he also says that, well, in order for Medicare for All to work, we're going to have to tax the middle class. But it, he'll, we'll, it'll make up for it because, you know, with the amount of premiums and the deductibles and the co-pays that you'll save, it'll make up for it. Well, actually, no, it won't, Bernie. Because I'm a pretty healthy individual. I probably maybe go to the doctor once a year. That's for my checkup. Under the wellness benefit, it pays 100%. So no, that would not equal out. Do what, I mean, if, if I'm paying more in taxes, excuse me, I dropped my pen. If I'm paying more in taxes uh, to like basically give everyone else free insurance, including illegals, uh, no, that's, that's not helping me, Bernie. That's not helping me at all, Bern. That, that is, uh, that's, that's a failed, failed policy right there. So let's go ahead and continue with Medicare for All. Gillibrand, uh, Senator Gillibrand then goes on uh, about the, you know, Medicare for All, talking about a five-year buyout to eventually be a universal health care system, Medicare for All. I guess she's trying to reword it. Not working, buddy. Um, a five-year buyout. So within five years, people can go ahead and buy in it. And then by that time, they're going to replace this buyout deal with a universal health care, a.k.a. Medicare for all. They're going to force you into it after five years. So you have five years to adjust to it. And then they're going to force you into it. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I mean, how how do these people not see this? I mean, you, uh, I always tell people, look at history. Look at today, for crying out loud. Medicare, Medicare right now. The, what we have today for Medicare. It's supposed to run out of funds in 2026. 2026. This is 2019 right now. So in seven freaking years. No, six and a half. Less. We're in uh, July now. Or it'll be July uh, Monday. In 2026, Medicare is due to run out of funds. Now that's just for those eligible right now. Now you're going to force people to pay into something? And it, like, oh, you know, oh, well, you know, if everyone's paying into it, Laura, you know, then it'll work. Then it won't run into, uh, you know, won't run into uh, problems. I say nay buddies out there or anyone who wants to debate me on it because here's the fact I pay Medicare taxes out of my paycheck so do a lot of Americans out there in fact everyone working a normal job pays Medicare taxes and the whole promise in which Kristen Gillibrand also stated uh, she usually she used Social Security notice how she didn't use Medicare the current Medicare system she used the Social Security as a comparison to universal health care aka Medicare for all keep paying into it and it will be an earned benefit well another thing with Social Security sweetheart is that it's projected to end in 2034 the funds are supposed to be depleted now it'll be way past 2034 honey before I can retire so everything that I'm paying now into Social Security and Medicare, even though I've been paying into it, I mean, I've been working since I was 14 years old. So all that money that I've been paying into it, into an earned benefit that I should have by the time I retire, won't even be in existence. So I'm paying into something for other people that I won't be able to use myself, even though they promised me that I would be able to use it because I paid into it. It would be like a little savings account, they said. And now they want Medicare for all. You just pay into it, Kristen Gillibrand says. You just pay into it, like Social Security. 
Are you a nitwit? Yeah, I think the answer is yes, you are. Kirsten or Kristen or however you pronounce her freaking name. Gillibrand, I think that's the only thing. It's like Buttigieg. Like, is it Boot Edge Edge or Buttigieg or is it Kirsten, Kristen? I don't know. And God forbid I say anything wrong because people are going to get offended. So, yeah. So, that goes on. Well, let me give you some. Uh, then they, <coughs> excuse me. And a lot of people that I argue with always argue or uh, kind of use the argument of Canada's universal health care system or Britain's universal health care system. Well, let me give you some facts. You know, I know it's not fun to hear them, but, uh, you know, this is actually from different reports. Uh, what's the least damage that I can start with? Okay, I think I'm going to go with We'll go with, uh, we'll go for Britain. So, Britain's National Health Service, that's their Medicare for All. The NHS, the National Health Service, that is their own little acronym or name for what we call or would call Medicare for All. The public health care system send some, or I'm sorry, that we're gonna, no, let's, let's go over, there. um, okay, so that was about Canada, okay, so I'm gonna be mixing and matching here, I didn't really put my notes in correctly, I've been, uh, doing a lot of things today, including researching this, but, um, one of the quotes, and this is dealing with Canada, the public health care system sends some Canadians abroad for treatment, partly because of the lack of available local resources. Now, that's, what's, that's what happens when you have a nationalized health care system or a universal health care system, when it's a, a single-payer system. Hospitals start to close down because it's not competitive anymore. The pricing completely drops. Okay, they want to say that health care is right. Look, at, let's, let's just define health care versus actual health care of what health care is. Health care of what their terms are is health insurance. They want you to have health insurance. Well, just say that. Have health insurance. But the health insurance that they're talking about, which is the Medicare for All, is a collapse on the health service you'll actually receive. Because the health service will completely deplete. They won't get paid you know, versus the competitive rating. They won't want to exceed. They won't want to, you know, find innovative ideas to treat illnesses or cancers or anything like that because they'll be on the same level playing field and the same level paying field. No one's going to want to do more. The service is going to go kaputs and that's it. And it's been proven. It's been proven not only in Canada, but also Britain of the services depleting, hospitals closing down, doctors just Nope, you know what, forget it, not doing this anymore. They'll go into another practice, or not another practice, but even a new job outside of the medical field. Now, recent reports states, or cites, excuse me, pressure on all services is rising and care is increasingly being rationed. Now, we're talking about uh, the the British, uh, Britain's National Health Service. This is the NHS that I was talking about before. Pressure on all services is rising and care is increasingly being rationed. Waiting lists should not be rising, and yet they are. This is from Mark Porter, who is the council chair of the British Medical Association. I think this guy probably knows what he's talking about. This isn't from some right-wing or left-wing newspaper. No, this guy actually sits on the board of the British Medical Association. He's saying that these services um, are being rationed. Because of, and if you don't know what that means, that means the people providing the services are decreasing. That means because it's a whole government service, they have to ration out of who can have what. I mean, look at these uh, the, these past news reports. I forgot the names of it. And excuse me because I feel terribly, like I feel horrible about it. But these like little babies and everything uh, who are, um, you know, terminally ill are taken off of life support per direction of the government with their parents having no say. Even when the parents want to go to the United States to get treatment, I mean, there was people, doctors, wanting to pay for their flights to get over here, wanting to give the services for free. The Brits said, nay, you cannot do that. 
because we control what you do when it comes to your health. So uh, in both cases, the, the patients died and the families are left to suffer. I mean, now we're talking about mental health issues, which again, they're lacking if you look at reports. Uh, doctors always want to deliver the best possible care for our patients, but we can't continuously plug gaps by penny pinching and poaching from elsewhere in an overstretched NHS. Again, this is what happens. People start leaving it. It's not going to happen. So they try to you know, expand it without spending too much money because, again, this is a taxpayer-funded thing. We are paying for it, whether you like it or not. And this is like now retrospect. <laughs> or uh, of what the Brits are dealing with. They're paying for it. The taxpayers are paying for it. And that's the money that they have to use. So they have to stretch out their resources, ration the care, and um, the quality just goes down. Hip and knee replacements in Britain uh, are an average 100-day wait time. That's the result of their universal health care. Routine surgeries, uh, an average of an 18-week wait time. A, a study by London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine concluded that around 750 patients a month, and that's what they, the test studies, what they, the number that they were working with, one out of 20 die due to the lack of quality. No follow-ups. They were given the wrong diagnosis, wrongly prescribed meds. I mean, it, examples, uh, an elderly woman dies from cardiac arrest on a gurney due to a shortage of hospital beds. 73-year-old man dies from an aneurysm in a waiting room in which he was there. I mean, the length, I forgot the length of time, but it, I think the average over there is four hours in a waiting room, regardless of your illness. And especially if you're old. I mean, talk about like the elderly. They're they're they've got the short end of the stick there. They the government decides, okay, you're old. If you're terminally ill or you're old, we're not even gonna worry about you because it's not worth our money to save your life. Can you imagine grandma and grandpa going to that kind of hospital? Your grandma and grandpa that you care for so much that are maybe in their sixties, early seventies, like this guy, seventy three years old. I mean, wouldn't you want the best care for him? No, you're not gonna get that. Doctors are instructed by NHS to not give, um, uh, not give life-saving instructions to patients, meaning uh, new innovative ideas that have been coming out. Because why the NHS can't pay for it, so because they don't want to make them distraught or give them false hope, they don't want the government doesn't want doctors to give. Innovated life-saving instructions to patients with cancer. Term, this is a this is an increase or uh, an, a very interesting one that I just found out. I did not know this. Terminally, uh, terminally ill patients are marked close to death. So if you are like a stage one cancer that could be terminally ill, there's no cure for it or anything. Just stage one. There's hope. For you still, I mean, in America today, at least there still would be terminally ill patients, no matter what, are marked close to death to allow withdrawal of life support. Now you're like, okay, like again, with the rationing, it kind of makes sense with it. Well, the one thing that they don't state in here, and do I have my notes on it uh, that attaches to it? If uh, I don't have it in front of me, but with the terminally ill patients to allow, um, you know, marked close to death to allow withdrawal of life support. If they find out of uh, different techniques or treatments that they could receive and they go and find it and they pay out of pocket for it, they will be barred from the NHS, from the Britain's universal health care system. If they even seek out and pay out of their pocket and the government finds out, which I'm sure they will, they will be barred from the NHS. So that means health care for all? No, it won't be health care for all. It's only health care for those who comply, meaning die or 
you know, we just won't treat you if you, you know, feel like saving your own life. It's absolutely ridiculous. The whole thing is. Um, another study uh, that actually compares Britain to the United States. This is a study from University uh, College London and, the, and uh, Columbia University. 10% of British, uh, British patients die in hospitals following a major surgery compared to a 2.5% in the United States. That's a pretty big difference. I mean, this isn't just like a point something percent, uh, 10% versus 2.5. Now, socialized medicine, it, this is the holy grail for the left. This is what, this is their stepping stone. One of many, I think a major one, uh, to complete their socialist, in my honest opinion, communist takeover. Socialism leads to communism. We all know this. To deny it, you, God, you, again, read a history book. This is their stepping stone. They tried this with Obamacare. I think during the debate, I think it was only Biden that brought up Obamacare. And the reason why was because he was the vice president during the time of its creation. We cannot let this happen. Everything, uh, whether you're left or right, um, it doesn't matter. If you yourself have a medical condition or know someone with a medical condition, do your research on what happens with Medicare for All. Don't go into your little box or your bubble of uh, uh, news organizations that only give you the, uh, you know, give you information or opinions on how it is so good for Britain and Canada and everything like that. Actually, look at the facts. Look at the facts of what actually happens when it comes to that. And you'll be shocked. I mean, at least vote against that. All right? <laughs> Tell them, I don't want you doing this, okay? I'll vote for you, but I don't want you doing this. It's a big deal. And, again, they're talking like, oh, you know, with Obamacare, you know, 20 million people will lose their health insur insurance. 20 million is a lot. Well, under Medicare for All, 180 million people are going to lose their health insurance. And uh, it, it's not going to be pretty. This is going to be the uh, the downfall of America as we know it. So, anywho, um, I can go on and on about this. This is why I only wanted to bring up one thing because it, it, tonight could have lasted three hours with the other subjects that I wanted to talk about. I hope you liked the video. Happy 4th of July, I remembered. Um, happy 4th of July to everyone out there. Again, it's our uh, independence. Uh, the independent, or, or like a nation's birthday, but our independence from the Brits. Hey, and we were just talking about them for half the show. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I guess I'll.